and I'm not just saying this. You're literally like my favorite character on this show because you are absolutely bold. <laughs> so you, bold. yes, I mean you are just way too bold for me. Sometimes a little too bold. Talk mm -hmm. to me about being a part of this project, and I'm also very curious to hear: is there like any ad libbing going on with your character? Because I can kind of sense that a little bit. Well, I have to say thank you for that because it's a trick of mine. There is no ad libbing at all. That is that is the writers who are writing that badass stuff that makes it seem as though I'm impro improvising in the moment. He's a character who thinks on his feet and he has to really attend to the other people that he's in the room with. So for the writers to have the forethought to consider that and write me um, lines of dialogue that are about the discovery of the real moment, they're not just about like plot development or relation development, they're about moment to moment things. That's what makes it appear to you as though I'm improvising. But Corey is really like throwing in some yeah. some of his Billy, yeah. and uh, you know on the oh, screen. I wish it was Billy. It is not. That is not Billy. <laughs> Billy is sweating underneath. <laughs> oh, get in town! It is like nothing but flop sweat because Mimi works really fast. We've got a crew that's expert, so you get you know like a couple of high pressure situations to deliver one of those monologues. Like I was telling you before, if I stumble at all, that's not Corey. Corey doesn't stumble, so. I have to make sure I know that back and forth and get the steps right while she's doing it. And um, I'm not as good as he <laughs> is. So I just, I just have to use my actor, actor work for that. I love it. So I have to ask, like, what took Corey so darn long to tell Bradley, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Billy. I literally felt like watching TV on the couch. I'm like, I feel like he's saying it to me. Like, it's so <laughs> real. I love seeing that vulnerable side of your character in that particular scene. Take me back to that moment and what was it like filming that? Well, um, I'm glad. Thank you. I'm glad you responded to that. <laughs> well, I think maybe one of the reasons it felt like that is because it was a discovery for him in that moment that he actually had the capacity to love someone. Not be in love, not but to actually champion another human being in a way that we, he noticed in that moment was like, oh crap, is this, I think it's love. Yeah. And that's a, a fun thing to see in a 50 year old, you know, that yeah. they're discovering something for the first time that, you know, I, I think our, our collective hope was that it wasn't um, a declaration in the way that he had been trying to uh, suppress male privilege before. It was a discovery that in the face of the uh, impending collapse of the world and the pandemic, that he wanted a person that he valued to know that they were loved. Before I let you go, filming during that COVID like phase, yeah. what was that entire like journey and process like? It was because I love that you guys shine the light on that particular era that the world lived in, like to that magnitude. What was it like? Well, Greta and I had this conversation when we were first going back to shoot some of the scenes about COVID protections and stuff. Because we were then past it at a certain point, it was kind of upsetting to go back to that moment and remember that moment when we didn't know how close we go, we didn't know what kind of barrier would work for uh, keeping people safe. And we didn't know the extent to which this could, you know, harm our community. And that kind of like constant tension, that really did a number on all of us. So revisiting it was in one way kind of um, uh, stressful. Uh, in another way, it, it al allowed us to have some perspective on what we had shared and been through together, which was um, uh, uplifting. And so the, you know, when we actually were shooting during COVID, it was like, keep one foot in front of the other. That's it. Just, we're going to get, we were one of the first productions to come back to work and the protocols were extremely, extreme, extremely strict. It was in October, you know, before the vaccine or anything. And um, so the, um, that was a collective company effort that I was just very proud to be a part of. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Meet again, John. Two for two. I would say we're winning. You are all good right there. Thank you. So you played a character, Paul, yes. in the morning show. Talk to me about peeling back the many different layers of Paul, like, throughout season three, and what has that journey been like for you? We talked about it when we first started the show, and I met with 
Mimi and Charlotte and Jen and Reese, and we really talked about what is the, what's the point, right? Why bring this character into this world? And we, we established that he's, his financial reality was kind of the, the main driver of the story, but the secondary element is like Jen and I being very close in age, kind of people who, you know, in, 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 the, in the world of the story, work takes precedent over life and love and we go what is that like at 50 what does that feel like for people who are wildly accomplished good at what they do made all the money seen all the things what else is left and you go well there's a lot left and what what does that look like and then we just kind of established that that this is what that looks like and it was a nice um way to portray a relationship between two adults that happened to look like me and jennifer aniston um and it was really fun to do. And we, 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 we had a really great time shooting it. Um, and and I, I thought that the show, the season arc turned out really great. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that people liked it. And before I, I love let your you earrings, go, John. by the way. Those are really nice. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Before I let you go, John, like, in what ways do you feel like you personally can connect to your character, Paul? Well, first of all, I wish I was a billionaire. Can I say that out loud? Let's bring it in, universe. Come on. Less We're manifesting yes. billions. There you go. There you go. Um, but I, I, I do think there's, there's something about, I, I got married very late in life, you know, there's something about finding the right work-life balance. That's kind of where I found my way into Paul. I was like, the person who, whatever their life had been up till then, uh, making money, trying to do the things, make all the things, create all the stuff, and then at a certain point you go, wait, I got to be happy too. John, which I am very much so right now. So there you go. Thanks so much, it's a John. Great Thank see you. you. It's a pleasure very seeing you also. Looks. I love I know. <laughs> Thank you, John. So we have my very favorite weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, this entire series is just full of so much emotion, yeah. the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, so many feelings, yeah. so many emotions. Yeah. Like, what has it been like? digging into your character and pulling out each element of your role? You know, that's a great question because you're, you're absolutely right. It used to be with TV that, you know, our characters all had to be sort of likable. It, there, like when I started in TV 30 some years ago, I'm dating myself, but it's true. Many in the, in the 90s, it was, we were screen, we were tested, focus grouped on how likable we are. And what you just said is so true. Now we can like a character, not like a character within any given episode, hate him, empathize, not empathize with him. And there's more of an uh, impetus for for us creatively to see a character in a more, more holistic way, you know, which is, you know, sort of, I guess, trying to, you know, really get into the human experience in a more realistic way. I love that. I love that certainly as an actor that we get to explore the darker sides of these characters, the, the p sides of our characters that are misunderstood, our fears, you know, and hopefully people can, you know, identify with that, you know. And so that's what I love about the show. That's what I love about my character, that he feels completely misunderstood. Like the world loves this series so much because it is that relatable, right? I, I mean, I feel like we all have a, a Alex, a Bradley, you know, a crazy Corey. <laughs> yeah, in our lives somewhere, especially in our work lives. Like, do you feel like that's one of the key reasons why we're so locked into it? Well, I'm glad you said that because you know we're trying to replicate what what you know. I imagine you on a certain level experience, and you know, on on the media side which is, you know, interpersonal skills as you're dealing with, you know, uh, the news cycle, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, how are we doing? You tell me. I mean, are we, are we somewhat accurate? Are we in the ballpark? But, but I think that's what we're trying to do. And I th but I think even beyond the media, I think it is relatable to people, particularly in the workspace, where they may agree or disagree with someone on any given issue, but they, they're still human beings. They still hopefully see each other as humans. And I think that's one of the things that the show tries to investigate. Uh, one of the things I investigated with Bradley's character was journalistic integrity. You know, with her, do I turn on my brother over January 6th? You know, uh, uh, you know and, and is my loyalty to family, to my brother specifically, or is it to my integrity? So there's questions like that that, yeah, very real and, and hopefully very relatable to people. I think it is. Let's have a little fun before I let you go. Do you believe in workplace love? Do you feel like uh, it is possible? Listen, listen, not only do I think it is possible, I'm living proof that it exists. Cause in real life? My, I'm, I married my wife. We met on a show 30 years ago. On you, Mo 
No, we met on a show called Muscle 30 years ago. We shot like over there about four, four blocks away in the Gower Studios. It was one of the shows that launched the WB. She was she was one of the leads. I was one of the supporting you know series regulars, and we were told at the time it was a great cast. Alan Ruck was in it. Michael Boatman, incredible cast. Yeah, Amy Peetz, and we were all really young. And the, the producer said, you you know we really we're going to go five years. Uh, we please we ask you not to date. So which to me was a recipe for like well that means we should date. Right. right. And yeah, three weeks in, we didn't tell anybody we started dating, and no one knew. Nobody knew. We didn't tell anybody, but you know that 30 years later, we're still we're still there. So I am. Like, yeah, me too. Uh, well, you know, Shannon Kenny Carbonell. It's my wife. <laughs> you you are you are. I love that you asked that question. Thanks so much for sharing your love story with me, and congratulations on 30 years. Like. No, thank you so much. I know. Here we are. Thank. I appreciate it. Thank you. So Karen, it's such a pleasure to meet you. You play the role of Mia. Mia, you really lived in the role. Right. I mean, like you really, really brought it all out. Like, how did you prepare, you know, to fill such big shoes? Right. Um, I definitely spent a lot of time on television news, journalists, social media. They would probably feel uncomfortable with how much time <laughs> I spend looking at what they do. I also spent a lot of time on the producers of television morning news shows social media um it's fascinating to me it's a conversation right especially now during an election season during a political year like we're having um but also i think it's the press has been so challenged over the last several years what is truth in journalism and how difficult it has been uh to create an honest conversation uh, with the audience and, and, and the landscape that we are in right now. So I think it's relevant, I think it's important, and uh, it's, a, it's a real joy to, to do it. I love it. And what has it been like working with this star son they've had? Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, Billy, I mean, the list goes on, Mimi, yeah. you know. Yeah. What it's, it's, uh, it's been amazing. I mean, I think I was just saying to someone that I, I spoke I watch, I learn, I listen a lot, or I listen, watch, and learn, whatever. Do you know what I mean? I spend a lot of time, not just with executive producers, but also with the actors on the show. There's a lot to be learned. Um, and uh, to constantly be challenging yourself to bring your best work every season. Um, table reads are a lot of fun. We're going to have a table read soon, I hope, uh, before we start um, season four. Um, and I just can't wait to get back in there. Um, you know, you always want to work with people who are doing great work, uh, doing work better than yours, or, or people that you're really inspired by. Um, and uh, that's the morning show. It just makes you a better actor. It makes you a better craft person. Um, and it helps to broaden your perspective as an artist. So uh, I feel very lucky and fortunate to be season four. We've been doing this for five years, six years now. So. Karen, who are some of the women you feel in the television industry, Hollywood, has helped to pave the way for you as an actress and to get to where you are today? Man, so many women, just even in the last five or six years, it really isn't just actors, but it's women behind the scenes in the C-suites, people like Deborah Lee, people like Channing Dungy, um, who, uh, people like Shonda Rhimes, uh, like Regina King, who I'm working with now on this Netflix show forever, uh, Mara Brock-Akeel, uh, these incredible showrunners, producers, writers, creators, um, have not just um, uh, opened doors, but they've shown us what it looks like to be in these rooms. You, know, you take for granted uh, what it looks like to be in a diverse um, environment. And true inclusivity is a very, very difficult thing to achieve if you're not committed to it. And I think these women have been absolutely committed to making sure that all of us get in there, but also that they stay in there. Um, and it has opened uh, the doors for for you know, people like me to write and produce my own stuff, people like Issa Rae, um, just, uh, just an extraordinary number of people to uh, keep moving, le lean away. I could go on. Yeah. It, it's so many. I mean, it's not just women like, of course, Diane Carroll, Diana Ross, Lena Horne, you know, Angela Bassett, all of those women, but it really is making more room behind the scenes, e even behind behind the scenes 
to keep these these doors open for women of color. I feel like I can talk to you forever, but I am gonna let you okay. go but really quick. <laughs> we could let's talk. have a like seriously. Do you believe in workplace love? <laughs> have a little fun. Do I believe in workplace love? Mm -hmm. I don't. No. I don't. I do not mix business and pleasure. I do not. I do not do it. It's too messy. That's messy. It's very, very messy. Now, Mia Jordan believes in it, but I do not. <laughs> she likes a little mess. Yes, she does. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much, Thank you so Karen. much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I am doing amazing. My name is Latasha. Latasha. Yes. Amazing. Thank you. I, oh, I know oh, who you gold are. Derby. I love gold yes, derby. and you know we love you. I know you I'm, guys are like awesome. So talk to me about this series. Like the world loves it. We're all locked in. We're ecstatic for season four. The overall tone for this series has been very consistent and within, I would say, alignment season after season after season. Yes. Can we expect that same flow, or will there be like a huge twist to season four? I think there's, yes. <laughs> I would say there's always twists in our shows because the world presents them. The world presents these moments where we react, have to react to them and they're so complex and we see it in their eyes, in these big fat close-ups. And there's always twists. I mean, last season, we knew Roe v. Wade was falling, and it was really incredible. I mean, awful, awful that it <laughs> fell. But we were shooting the episode where we were talking about it, and we were able to actually react to it in real time. And so that was pretty amazing, doing a new show where we have real, you know, reactions that we can we can adjust with our writing and but we were already writing about it and so January 6 abortion rights women's autonomy it's a it's a meaningful show and I I you know we come home very full because I mean we're all just witnesses to what's happening in the world and we in our own little fic fictional world get to talk about it through our characters eyes through the through the lens of um, what's happening in the world and it's cool. Mimi, when it comes to the topics that you cover, like how do you and the team determine like which topic should be after the next, you know? Yeah, I think that's, you know, the writers really figure that out. And I think, I think, you know, when you finish a season, you have to reintroduce your characters again and where they are a couple years later and react to what's happening in the world now and pick a time period that we can write to and speak to and i know that in between season two and season three there was a two-year time frame yes. and obviously i think common sense will tell the world that yes. it takes a while to like write these scripts out yes. and pull this show together can we anticipate another two-year time frame yeah, I think you can okay. anticipate a time frame jump okay. for sure in that arena. I love that. And before I let you go, yeah. you're an Emmy Award winning expert. Thank you. How important is it for you to land another Emmy Award? Me personally? Well, at this point in my career, I've, I've got 10 Emmy nominations, one for directing and one for producing. And... It's just a little icing on the cake. It's, it's uh, gratifying in, in the way that people have seen it and recognize it and like it. And that feels good. It does. I can't lie. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mimi. So much. Lovely to Thank meet you. you. You're Thank lovely. You. Thank you. So, of course, I'm going to go straight in. Is there anything you can share with me about <laughs> <laughs> the world wants to know, right? So I have to well, ask about you anything you can share Gold about Derby. It's four. about honoring and celebrating season three. Um, well, I can tell you about season four. Um, you know, uh, we're here today with our incredible stellar cast. Um, and, um, you know, this season, I think, you know, the season 
We ended the last season on a bit of a cliffhanger. Yes, Paul Mark's scheme was defeated, but um, what was ahead for both uh, both Bradley and Alex and Corey, for that matter, was uh, in an exciting way completely unclear. Um, so I think this season you'll see. You know, this is a little bit about. Um, you know, uh, what does it mean uh, uh, if you finally get the thing you always wanted? And Bradley, it's hard to talk about, except uh, it'll be an exciting season for her. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Corey's, Corey's on the outs. He's got to figure out his way back. You know, he's kind of you know, got to crawl and figure out his way back. So so this is a little bit about they finally get the, th you know, for Alex and co, I think it's going to be about they finally got the thing they always wanted. And are they happier when they have it? And, um, and it's... Uh, anyway, but that's about all I can say about it right now. So particularly with Bradley and Alex's character, when it comes to like the creative approach <laughs> taken, like what does that entire process look like? Because I feel like obviously Alex and Bradley, their character roles continue to evolve over time, you know, and obviously we know with the ending of season three, we would have never saw that really come in. You know, the I way they did Great. with Bradley. So, like, what type of creative approaches are taking? Well, I think, you know, what's exciting about, you know, having made three seasons of it now, um, you know, uh, you know, there are things you know beforehand, and then th the show reveals itself. So, you know, Alex, you know, the two of them are, you know, Charlotte refers to the show often as a love story between these two, a fraught and complicated one full of dips in their relationship. Uh, but Alex is really, at the end of the day, is an institutionalist. And I think the end of season three, you really saw that. Like, she holds the thing together. And um, and Bradley is, you know, an uh, idealistic journalist who, you know, uh, you know, but, you know, who had her ideals tested this season. And, uh, but is a disruptor. You know, she's a disruptor. Uh, and a kind of, a bit of a change agent and sometimes a chaos agent. And so the that's so when you're looking each season you're kind of looking at from that those you know the, uh, each lens and there's validity in both both women's perspectives and there's um uh you know <laughs> um trouble in both perspectives right and so and the and the kind of dance between them i think is quite exciting on a human level um right we all have friends who kind of represent both types of people um and then also you know we're uh you know if you're in the media business or just in our you know, anywhere really in our in in the, in the world right now, um, those forces. That's I think part of the reason the show is probably resonating so much is the tension between them is a little bit the tension of our time. I, that's a I'm sorry, it sounds pretentious with Gold Derby, but that that's kind of that's true, you know. And so I think that's some of the power of the show. I love all of the great work that you, the team, the cast, everyone's doing. I'm looking forward to season four. Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you for your support. And, I, and you, it's going to be great. So. Yeah, I'm going to Thank you. You look amazing. Ah, thank you. Charlotte, so you are the writer behind this phenomenal series. Talk to me about bringing this story to life, like all of the, the drama, the love, you know, the, 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 the feelings, the emotions, just just a whirlwind of a trillion things. What has it been like bringing this story to the big screen with all of the mess going on behind the scenes? I think no matter how, wha no matter how crazy a day or rough a day, when you type a scene, you know who's going to be playing the scene and that always, sorry, that always has got, I'm sticky here. I can do it again if you want. Um, that's always inspiring. You know, no matter, no matter how rough a week is, you're like, I am writing a scene for Jen and Reese. This is amazing. Like you never forget, like that always lifts you and you're like, all right, let's do another pass. Let's make the scene better, you know, because just the, the power of the actors. And also, you know, like Mimi Leader's gonna shoot it and it's gonna be amazing. and. You know, whether it's like a tiny scene between two people whispering or like a giant action scene, you know, sh you know she's going to kill it. So you really partly write to your colleagues' excellence. You know, that's a big inspiration, I think. Jennifer and Reese always be two women in the running for this I have no role. idea. You'd have to ask. I honestly don't know. Um, I believe so, but, you know, I came on starting season three, so the history of the show is a little bit, like, I didn't even have time to, <laughs> I just came in and typed. Yes, exactly, so, yeah. Season three, which episode has been your absolute favorite? 
it's 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 impossible to pay. I mean, I have my favorite scenes, but um, um, I just like when people are messy, yeah. and the, when the characters are messy and they fail, mm -hmm. and they have to deal with their failure. Because I really relate to that. I just yeah, love I think that. We all can. Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the it's the imperfection of the characters. I think that's why people watch. They look perfect, <laughs> but they don't behave well. And that I think the tension between that is really it's fun, but it also I think is true. Right. Yeah. Before I let you go, when it comes to the casting or anything that you can share about season four, of course I have to ask, is there anything yes. you can share with me? I think people will be very surprised. So we are playing the consequences of season three, but you might be real surprised at what those consequences are. They might not be what you expect. Yeah. So thank you. A pleasure. Thank you. Take care. You too. Well, you are the phenomenal production designer behind the scenes of this amazing hit series. Talk to me about film and one set and some of these studios that you guys like chose to make this magic happen. Well, it's kind of crazy. We hardly go on location at all. We're only in New York for like about five days of filming. And uh, so I've had to create Italy, I've had to create you know, Wuhan, China, and New Year's Eve in uh, Times Square, all actually here in Los Angeles. And then, no, it's all here. And then you see um, our news, uh, news floors have about uh, 13,000 square feet of office space and hallways that are a set and that we reconfigure and redress and become the different offices and the different bullpens. Uh, and then on yet another stage, we have all of the show within a show uh, spaces. And then my third stage is personal environments. And so we built Bradley's loft there. We have Alex's, oh, thank you. I know everybody, Jennifer walked in and was like, I think I need to move. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Alex's penthouse and, and uh, uh, the Laura Peterson uh, uh, Upper East Side uh, townhouse and all of those things that go into it. And then I have to broom things away to create like a gantry tower and a uh, space capsule, you know. And, and so it's not only how things look, but also the set operations and how you put it all together so that you actually can make your schedule because it's you don't have all the time in the world. And I think that's perfect that you mentioned schedule, Paul, because like, and I know this is, it has to be probably like the weirdest question to ask, but I'm so curious when it comes to like the hours and the days and I guess maybe weeks that are put into like each different set, particularly Italy. Yeah. Like, how long did it take with that specific well, set? I only have about 12 weeks of prep to get things going. So you're wow. you're just barely staying ahead of this. And, uh, you know, to create something like um, John Hamm's character, Paul, how he has uh, his, his uh, space division of his corporation. How do you do the graphics? How do you build the gantry? How do you build the spacecrafts? And... and Actors aren't always available every day, so you have to play, you know, moving things around, figuring out how they fit into the space, and then how do you get things ready for them to be able to rehearse, like doing the waitlessness, and, you know, and so you're, you're working around schedules, and you're doing multiple episodes at the same time, and it, you know, I say this season definitely was like doing a Rubik's Cube behind your back because there was so much complexity just to getting things done when they needed to be done for the actors. So, Which set has been your absolute favorite to, you know, design, to oh, work man. in and break out with? Like I have a soft spot for Bradley's Loft. I've been wanting to get, uh, you know, Tribeca or, you know, other neighborhoods. You know, this season was so much about uh, each character's uh, personal space. And we hadn't seen those personal spaces in the other seasons. So I wanted to, uh, I mean, we'd seen Alex's and we'd seen hotel rooms, but uh, to actually find what, you know, Bradley decided to purchase during COVID. And it's big and industrial and it feels like a throwback to West Virginia, things that she's familiar with. And yet at the same time, it's kind of empty, kind of like how she's feeling on the inside. And yet you're pushing the boundaries and trying to see other parts of New York. And that's all on stage. So, you know, no one, no one believed, you know, so many people think we just, you know, found a loft and, and shot in it. And it's like, no, it's a set. It's so crazy because, like, unless we speak with experts like you, you know, who are, like, making all of these amazing things happen, like, behind the scenes, mm. yet on the screen, we would never know, like, what, what it's like. You're not really in Italy. Right. You're not really right. in Times Square. Yeah. So, 
What does this project and, you know, perhaps an Emmy nomination coming forth or a couple well, of Emmy nominations, what would it mean for you as a production designer before I let you go? Well, I love the idea of people getting, you know, really excited about the story and about how journalism is and, and honesty in journalism is so important and that integrity and um, the the best part about this show, I have a long time uh, association with Mimi Leader, who's a producing director, and this whole team is so sharp and so um, just exhilarating to work with. I mean, I've done many projects with Reese in the past, and to uh, now get to work in this environment with Jennifer and Billy, and every day be inspired by their excellence, uh, it just it just makes you want to do even more to make it at its highest level possible. And so I'm just glad that people are even, uh, uh, you know, talking about it and loving it and all that sort of stuff and that we're in the hunt is, is really exciting. But the work itself and this team is one of my best favorite, just favorite experiences of my career. In my heart. Thank you so much for Thank chatting with me, so Paul. Much. Congratulations on all this amazing work. Thank you. I do really mean I it. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.